We've become increasingly dependent on technology and this is unlikely to slow down. We're also becoming increasingly intolerant of technology failure, whether it's a no signal on a mobile phone or signal failure on a train. With me now to discuss how supply chains can keep pace with this insatiable demand for smarter infrastructure is Stuart Miller, co-founder and CEO of Buybox. Well, Stuart, let's start with the main challenges facing technology infrastructure today and how are supply chains responsible responding to this? Well, I think the main challenges, as you've already highlighted, are the fact that as a society, we are increasingly dependent on tech, whether it is our phone, whether it's a medical machine, whether it's an ATM. We absolutely expect 100% uptime, and we expect it to come for free. So the main challenge for supply chain companies who are responsible for keeping the infrastructure uptime 100% and keeping it ticking over is to not think like a distribution company, to not think like a supply chain company. The main insight is for them to think like their customers. You know, so if you go back 20 years, you know, would you have thought that a smartphone could have the kind of screen that it has today? We might have all thought no. Some people really thought no, and they suffered as a result, some of the tech companies. So as supply chain companies, if we think that certain things are not possible, if we just sit there and, and, and assume that things can't be done in a particularly innovative or, or disruptive way, um, then we will struggle. So the, the main for me, and the way that we run Biobox, is not to think so much like a logistics company, but to think much more like our customers. And when it comes to customer expectation and demands, how have they changed, and why is it so important to understand them? The challenges actually haven't changed, interestingly. They're, they've been the same challenge which is probably true in many sectors it's you know lower cost improved service I want you know more for at least the same spend or, or, or ideally less and for us it, it's for, as a distribution company uh, at the outset it can be quite counterintuitive to think well I need to work out how to move things around the world less frequently because usually for a distribution company that means making less money you move something less you make less money so it's quite a bold step to say I want to invest in our case millions in technology and software to actually help our customers spend less money with us but that is without question at the heart of our success. Well, Buybox has in fact grown every year for the past 15 years. So what would you say are the key principles to drive continued growth for a tech company? We started in Silicon Valley and that maybe is where we got our real appetite for tech and to think of ourselves as a software and technology company. How we do that and how we've driven the growth year after year, I, I, for me, it all actually starts with recruitment. It starts with recruiting the right people with the right constructively rebellious disruptive mindset. You know, you can't shift a sector with shrinking violets. You have to have people who are prepared to think beyond convention and people that are prepared to think beyond conforming to certain things. So it starts with with rebellion. And interestingly, a lot of companies will try and brainwash that out of you. They try and bash it out of you. But for us, we try our hardest to look for that twinkle in your eye uh, when we recruit people. And then, of course, you need to give people a, a sort of a a framework to work within and to allow that curiosity to manifest itself in some commercially viable innovation. Well, the UK obviously depends, well, the UK economy depends on entrepreneurs to start new companies and then take them global. So is the UK a good place to launch a tech business? Oh yeah, short answer, it's a fabulous, it's a great country to launch any kind of business. I learned a new word recently called entrepreneur. You hear about these entrepreneurs that want to start a company, want to be an entrepreneur, but never quite get themselves to it. And they'll moan about things like the lack of access to finance, the lack of all sorts of things. The UK is a fantastic place to be an entrepreneur. It's fantastic in terms of the support for investment and the tax relief that's available for investors in early stage companies. It's fantastic for an entrepreneur for the same reason in terms of, you know, it's financially very rewarding as an entrepreneur if you're successful in the UK. And more importantly recently, the ecosystems that have evolved in so many parts of the UK and the obvious places like Oxford, Cambridge and London, that sort of magic triangle. But it's beyond that. If you look at the facts as we go into the Midlands, into Birmingham and more north into Manchester and beyond, we really are into our stride in the UK in terms of startups uh, and it's clearly become now and my mum used to, to, to jive me, saying, you know, when will you get a proper job? Well, I think now we are realising becoming an entrepreneur and starting your own enterprise is a very, very credible career option. But you don't think the government could do more to help? No, well, interestingly, I think what the government should do is, um, in varying forms, just get out of the way. I think they do what they do well today is to provide the tax incentives and the financial infrastructure for entrepreneurship to flourish and for innovation to flourish. They can do more in terms of encouraging business schools to work with entrepreneurs 
And I know Lord Young's initiatives around that, that space are very, very encouraging. So there are certain things that government can be supportive of, but fundamentally, I think government's role is to allow us just to get on with it. So finally, how do you foresee the tech supply chains developing in the coming years? And what will be the major issues moving forward? The tech supply chains are always um, a, a tough place to work and then definitely not for the faint hearted because of the expectation that we've just discussed. I think one theme that we'll see emerging is that the, the ever impatient consumer, you and I, will become more and more involved and more and more integrated into the supply chain itself. So put another way, we'll become more and more involved in being the solution to our own problem. Now whether that's as a consumer or whether that's a, as a, an employee consuming some kind of technology device. So for example, if you're running a local shop, well do you really need an engineer to come and fix your point of sale machine if it breaks? If you can give you a script on your iPhone, can you not just fix it yourself? So I think we'll start to become, as consumers, employers and, and operators, much more involved in the whole tech supply chain ourselves.